Wonderful time, uh, IS 2020. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, wherever you find yourself here in Ghana, across the globe, we want to welcome you to the virtual edition of IS 2020. Can I hear some noise right now? All right, so people, it reminds me so much of when. We used to get together and make it happen. Last year, by this time, we were all gathered at the National Theatre, where indeed many lives were impacted. And we'd like to say a very big thank you to our president, Pastor Brian Amwateng, always ensuring that we all get to be living a life that we want to be living. It is at this moment, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, that we'd like to also say a big thank you to each and every person that has been part of IS 2020, IS 2019, IS 2018, IS 2017. It's been six years of impacting generations the very positive way. And we are grateful to our president, Pastor Brian, uh, for making this happen almost every year. So this year, as you all know, COVID-19 took over. And because of that, we won't be able to come together like we always do it. But indeed, it's still going to be on virtual and virtual means that we're going to sit in our various homes and enjoy the very best of speakers that we have in this country. People who have lived lives and are here to impact all that have gone through to generations yet unborn. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, before we begin, we would like to say a word of prayer. It is important that we go before the Almighty God. And so I would like to invite here on the podium uh, to begin with. An opening prayer for us. Please, round of applause for Pastor David as he comes to give us the opening prayer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. I want us to pray. Lift up your hands wherever you are. Lift up your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we bless your name. We give you glory. We thank you for your mercies and your grace over our lives. Father, we commend IS 2020 into your hands. Begin with us and end with us. In the name of Jesus, Father, we give you praise. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. Thank you very much, Pastor David, for doing us the honors. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, wherever you're watching us from, this is IS 2020. And it's going to be days of great ministration, of course, uh, impactation as well, as we have uh, men of God and uh, musicians who are ministering and expanding the territories of uh, the Most High. And they're all going to be performing here as we do it almost every year. We'd like to say a big thank you to our sponsors and media partners for supporting us every year and making this possible. We'd like to say a big thank you to Enterprise Life Insurance. We'd like to say a big thank you to Vodafone and also Awake Water. Pay Angel, we're grateful for the love and support. And also the Youth Employment Authority, we're grateful for the love you've shown us over the years. And also Cora Spa 7, we'd like to say a big thank you. Our media partner, the multimedia group Joy Prime, we're grateful for the support you've given us over the years. This is always powered by divine media. 
and they always ensuring that we get to have all the beautiful images that we see. A big round of applause for the IS Band! All right, so we have um, speakers that you would love to listen to. And uh, need I tell you that the CEO of Vodafone is going to be talking to you. I didn't hear you say hey, amen to that. Say amen. amen. And also we have uh, Mr. Paul Mante. He's going to also be here as a speaker. So you want to wait and see all of the beautiful messages that they have for you. We're going to move on, but before that, it's important that we get to hear from the director, uh, the national director of IS. And this is a man over the years has uh, been able, with hard work, ensured that we always have a smooth running IS. And this year, he's doing the same. Please, let's make welcome the one and only Pastor Isaac to welcome us officially IS 2020. morning everyone we thank God for this wonderful time this is the first morning of our IS 2020 we're going to have tremendous time we're going to have great 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 speakers speaking to us as we've been on for the past six years and I want to say everyone is welcome we're having great people watching us all over the world we have about 17 countries that have joined in as groups. So what is happening is that last year we had wonderful people coming in from St. Vincent Island. We have about 19 people coming in and we had people traveling from Holland, from America and the United Kingdom and all these countries and other African countries that also joined us for our conferences in the previous years. What is happening now is that they are virtually joining us in auditoriums in their respective countries. I think it's a good place to put your hands together. <laughs> Wonderful. So as IS is, is to educate, inform, and empower. And I want you to know that this is the time for you to let someone know what is happening. Just click on the share button or send the link to a friend a brother, a sister, a family. Let them be partakers of what is happening here. And I want you to know that someone is just an information away of breaking limits, information away of changing the, the, the standard of his or her life. And someone is also an education away. So this platform is to educate, to inform, and to empower. And we want to say a very big thank you to our president, who even through all what is happening in the world is determined and with his undying spirit and faith has made this conference possible. I want to say a very big thank you to Pastor Brian Jones Amwatin. And I want you to know that it is wonderful three days. We're having six sessions, the morning session and the evening session. So as we are beginning the morning session now at 10, the evening we are beginning at 6. And you don't, want to be, you don't want to be missing anything that our speakers are going to share. We're having great speakers, wonderful speakers, and we have great, great, great surprises for you, as it has always been in IS. So be blessed, be empowered, be informed, and enjoy IS 2020. God bless you. God bless you to Pastor Isaac. And please, we are also reminding you once again that this has been made possible by a determined team that always ensures that people who are living their lives and are giving up already, those who are on the process of giving up, those who are also not too sure of what to do, get to listen to wonderful speakers and change their lives in so many ways. That's what we have done in the past six years. And will continue to do 
and we'd like to say a big thank you to you for joining us wherever you find yourself around the world. We appreciate the love and support you've been giving us for the six years that we've been in existence, and we'll continue to ensure we do what we have to do to keep generation moving. Now, last year at the National Theatre, which of course had lots and lots of thousands of people gathering morning and evening uh, to be impacted on, I actually decided to do a selfie, and today, virtual or no virtual, I'm doing my selfie. So please, one, two, three. Let me everybody say, I am. Aha. COVID-19, you are a liar. Not here. Anyway, so we're going to still do what we have to do. It's just a process. We're going to get through this. And you know a lot of you out there would have loved to be at the National Theatre. Guess what? We're bringing it to your homes this time around. So please stay home, you know, sit tight, call your friends and family, and make sure that you're all watching us and you're all enjoying every single bit of IS 2020, the virtual edition. All right, so we'll move on. We'll bring you some ministration right now. And so I'd like to call on the worship and praises team. And guess what? They've got something magical for us to begin with. So please, let's... Uh, welcome uh, the leader, which of course is going to be Minister Johan. If you're here, please make your way here and a round of applause for Minister Johan. Hallelujah, this is IS2020. We want to welcome you. Our president is Prophet Brian. I want you to follow me with your heart right now. We want to bless the Lord at all times, like David said, and his praise will always be in our mouth. Wherever you are, lift your voice, lift up your heart, and give him worship. Give him praise. Honor the Lord right now. Honor the Lord right now. Give him worship. We give you all the praise, Lord. We give you all the praise, Lord. There is none like you, Lord. There is none holy as the Lord. There is none beside you. Come on, everybody. Come on, everybody. worship you, All the days of our lives, Lord. Everybody leads you on. Yeah, Lord, from the depth of our heart, Lord, we decline this place that won't go You alone deserve a praise. 
Pure Lord is our glory. We bring the sacrifice. Sacrifice. Somebody worship God.
awesome. And the Store IS 2020, the virtual edition this year. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen will not be able to do it in the auditorium. So we're here and we're reaching out to you across the world, wherever you find yourself. If you just join us over here, my name is KMG. I work with Multimedia Group and I'm your host for this year. Ladies and gentlemen, let's say a big thank you to our sponsors and of course our media partners for the great work they've been doing for us over the years. It's been six years. I would like to say a big thank you to Enterprise Life Insurance. Vodafone is also supporting us. We're grateful. Awake Water, we have Pay Angel, and then of course, uh, Youth Employment Authority. We appreciate the love and support. Uh, Cora Spa, uh, we're grateful. And of course, our media partner, Joy Prime, the multimedia group, and it's always powered by Divine Media. Speaking about social media and uh, viewing live wherever you find yourself, we'd like all of you, if you're watching us right now, to take your phones and go on social media right now and follow us. Now you can do so on Twitter, ISGH. ISGH is on Twitter. If you're on Instagram, it's IS Ghana. IS Ghana. And if you're on Facebook, it's IS. And so make sure you go there and follow our pages. You can drop your messages. If you're inspired, you can also put it over there. Whatever that is motivating you, uh, per the performances, the speeches, and everything that will be happening over here. You can let us know about it, and we'll be more than glad to hear from you. It's going to be three days of non-stop impartation, of course, great ministration as well. So if you want more of what you've seen over here, then it means that you need to be a part of it for the next three days that we're going to be giving you this. Now, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, tonight we have a very wonderful person in our midst. And that person is part of our speakers for this year. Those of you who were not at the National Theater last year for IS 2019, trust me and believe me, we had great, great people talking to us. Sarkodie was in there. We had uh, the likes of uh, great musicians, Joe Metal, also performing as well. And these are men that have been part of this over the years. And today, we've got one special person that is going to be speaking to us. I'd like to introduce quickly, and then we'll move on from there. This very person I'm about to talk to you is one of the few people that I've gotten an opportunity to be in a position where a lot of men have been and is doing very well. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, she is a Ghanaian female engineer, the first female to become chief executive officer of Vodafone Ghana. Her appointment, which happened on the 19th of February 2019, took effect on the 1st of April 2019. She is a member of the Ghana Institution of Engineers, GHIE, and the Vodafone's executive committee. Now, for her O level and A level, she attended St. Rose's Senior High, Aquitia, and the Presbyterian Boys Senior High School, respectively. She also continued at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, where she obtained a bachelor's degree in electrical, electrical engineering. Now, she holds an executive MBA and executive education degree from the University of Ghana, Lagon and College School of Management in the USA, respectively. Now, she's also acquired an executive education degree from INSEAD in France. Patricia Obonai commenced a new role with 22 years of experience in information technology, IT, and telecommunications. Now, before her appointment at Vodafone, she worked with Millicom Ghana Limited operators of Tigo for 14 years. She joined Vodafone in 2011 and worked as a chief technology officer and worked as a, a member of the executive committee as well. Then she was promoted as the director of fixed business and customer operations before she was appointed the CEO in 2019. Such a great personality we have for IS 2020. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please with a heart of applause, let's welcome our first speaker, Patricia Obo Nye, the CEO of Vodafone Ghana. Hi everyone, 
Happy to join you today for the IS virtual session. My name is Patricia Obonai. I'm the CEO for Vodafone Ghana. I really love the theme for this year, which is Breaking Limits. And I'm going to talk to you about a very, very interesting aspect of Breaking Limits. The timing for this is very important because we, are, we have two very interesting scenarios happening at the moment. One is what you know, which is COVID. 19 and what it brings and the other one is the whole revolution that is happening around digital transformation technology and what it brings to the future of work it's a very very interesting subject it's very close to my heart it's very practical but it's very very important for the youth of today and i believe you will make time to go through this session with me and take notes because it will make a difference for you so let's start. I remember when I started my internship in the 90s um, in one of the telecom companies. I used to sit in the switch room, we'll be giving a lock sheet, and then you would write the locks on the switch systems. And then you go back and sit behind the system and clear the alarms. All this has vanished. Today, the systems are self diagnosing. They are finding these faults themselves, they are clearing the alarms, they are actually doing proactive maintenance on them by themselves. So if this is all I was trained in school to do, if this is all the skill I have built, of what use would I be to the company by now? The world is changing at such a fast pace that it is important that we build the new skill sets to be able to move along. And that's why I mentioned two things, one pre-COVID and one post-COVID. I take you through a few scenarios. So I'm sure you've heard a lot of technologies happening, people using them in, 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 in the technology space. And you always say, oh, this is for the tech savvy guys. This is for the technology companies. Actually, no. Automation is happening across the world and across the different facets of work, whether it's legal, HR, finance, you know. If you come to Vodafone today, we're actually using what everybody is calling machine learning to do recruitment and to find um, offers for our customers. So today, I don't have people sitting down, going through the customer's behavior and then giving him an offer. It is a machine that is doing that. People are now using their talent, their skills to analyze the outcomes of this data and what to do with it. A lot of work that was being done by people to go through CVs in my HR team is no longer there. We have an algorithm, it's a tool called the Higher View. This comes through the CVs and then they filter using the algorithms and then we do video selection and then we do recruitment. What do you think is happening to the team in the HR uh, um, fraternity whose job was to go through the CVs? It is important that we start thinking about the future of work the new skills that we need, and what you're using your time for, especially in this time when you are at home. As I mentioned to you, if you come to my back office today, so our front line is where you go to our shop, people serve you, they help you. But if you come to the back office, they're actually robots today which are helping the team to answer the calls that come through our call center. Some of the things people write to us on social media it's a robot called Toby that is responding. How do you think the team who used to sit there and pick calls are, are feeling? What are they doing with their skills? Are they upgrading themselves? Are they moving to something else? Or they are waiting for their jobs to be taken over? There's a research that says that 45% of tasks will be automated. You know, it's not whether we want to do it or not. The world is doing it. The customers want it. Customers' expectations have changed. And so it's very, very important that you change along with it. And again, look at what has happened with our taxi drivers. People always say, ah, I'm not tech savvy, I can't do this, and so I'm going to choose a career that doesn't require technology. Today, Uber requires that they use an app. How do you think a taxi driver of old will be able to transition to the new? He needs to become tech savvy. So guys, we need to start thinking deeply about what future we want, about how we want to fit into the job market, how we want to make ourselves relevant. I'm going to give you 
a few nuggets which I believe will help you as youth. When I started my career, I started as an electrical engineer. And for a number of years, I worked in the technology at the engineering department, and that was it. But if I was going to advance in my career and grow into what I have become today, it was important that I build a new skill set. I wasn't content to be just an engineer. I started studying law. Interesting, huh? And then I went into marketing. And then I went into business strategy management. I was preparing myself to be of value to my company so that they wouldn't say that they need, they need a new technology director who will take them into the future. And I'm not ready to move into another role. I was ready to become the head of the customer operations team and run a commercial function which runs our fixed business because I prepared for it. You have to build new skills. Technology changes literally every two years. And so you can't be where you are and expect that when the companies think you're of redundancy, your name will not come up. You have to be above the game. You have to be ahead of the story so that when they are thinking of changing things, which will happen, you will not become a victim. And so I was able to transition into the role for two years. But whilst there, was that enough? Would I be ready to become a CEO? No. And so there were other things that I had to do, other skills that I had to acquire, especially around stakeholder management. This role requires that I deal with a lot of people above my head, lateral colleagues, people in other countries, in other markets. How am I supposed to do that if I don't know how to build collaborative relationships? And so you start building the skill set. It's no longer about the role. It's about the skill sets that you build to prepare you for the next, the next step because the world is changing. And so when I was ready to be interviewed, they didn't ask me about technology. They didn't ask me about my commercial strength. They asked me about how I could do the job, a job I had never done. But they were looking for somebody who had the skill set and was ready to take the job. And I hope you keep this point. It's very, very important for me that you start. It doesn't matter the level at which you are today, whether you have completed national service and you don't know what to do. You've just finished writing your exams. You don't even know where you'll be placed as a service personnel. You've just taken your first salary as, as an employer and as an employee, or you've even started your own company. Start thinking about what I'm saying. Do a self-assessment and ask yourself, do I have the right skill set for the next step where the world is going? You know, there are over 10 million developers in the world today who are taking very cheap technology, very available open source technology, and putting up amazing products and services that will challenge the very companies that you are setting up, the very companies that you want to work for. So whether you are ready or not, somebody is disrupting your space. And so you don't have a choice, but to use your time valuably to build these new skill sets. I'm going to give you my top five today, and I believe it will be useful to you for the future um, as you prepare to go into this future of work and the new normal we are all talking about. My first one, I think I talked about it briefly. We're talking about building collaborative relationships. We are now working from home. 95% of office staff in Vodafone have been working from home since March. A number of our people are working in what we call squads. They don't have a manager. They only have a product manager, um, a scrum master, they have a tester, and they sit together and they are given a task, they are given an outcome that we want, and that's it, develop my Vodafone app, and that's the brief. How are you going to do this? How are you going to work in a team? How are you going to get your product out if you don't know how to work collaboratively? You see, I'm not talking about getting an engineering degree. I'm talking about building a skill set that will help you succeed. And the first one is being collaborative, knowing how to be collaborative, how to influence, how to negotiate. Do a self-assessment, and if you don't have the skill set, try and build it now that you have time, now that you are all at home waiting to make your next big step. The second I talk about is what has become a very, very hot subject today, 
and that is the use of data. Data is now being guarded, whether you like it or not. Every time you, you, you interact with a shop, you interact with anybody online, some data is left behind based on your behavior. Telcos gather data as well. How I, as, if you go to the courts, data is being guarded. Are you the one putting the data together? I'm sorry, machines are doing that again already. What companies now require is somebody to derive insights from that data. You will have to take that data, look at it and say, of what use can we put this to? Companies are looking for problem solvers. So there's a lot of population movement. How are you taking that data and using that to solve the transportation problem between Accra to Kumasi? That's it for you. As youth, you need to start looking at the problems in your society and solving it. And data, understanding data, being able to drive insights from data is going to be so important. If you can build that skill set of being analytical, being a problem solver, be a critical thinker, it's going to help you. It doesn't matter the job rule. You will survive. You will survive. The next one, I've given you my two. The next one is tech serviness. And so people say, hey, I don't like the technology. Mm, I don't want to know. My dear, even the legal team, you'd say they have the big files, they have the big books. They have the legal automation software today. That is automating the way they work. It's now going to be about how you're able to analyze the case and win in court. It's not going to be about the structure anymore. How are you going to survive if you are not tech savvy? If you, how is that taxi driver surviving competing with the Uber driver? This is a very simple example because I don't want you to overthink this and think that the technology trends are changing. Companies are using the technologies. So it is no longer a choice. And you have this powerful tool in your hand called the smartphone. And I know many of you have it. It's one of the most powerful tools that you can ever find. And you can spend your time instead of just watching and binging on movies, you can spend your time figuring out how much of technology is happening in the world. Subscribe to some of these, these journals and read briefly. Go to the search engines. I'm going to mention a few. You look at people talk about artificial intelligence. They're talking about 3D printing. They're talking about automation, digital, and all those things. And you think it's far away from you, but you have Siri on your phone. You have Alexa in your house. Have you thought about how it's working? You have a GPS in your car, a navigator, an assistant, all these things that are coming directly into your world. Do you understand how they are working? Do you understand how some of them are eating slowly into the job that you think is available and how it will make you not worthy for the job market soon if you don't understand the technology. Understanding it is not becoming an engineer. Understanding it allows you to use it effectively to do your job. So three, I've talked about collaborative relationships. I've talked about data literacy. I've talked about tech serviness. I'm going to talk about a very interesting one, which is being flexible and adaptable. And I gave you the example of my situation, an engineer moving into CEO. It doesn't usually happen in a telecommunication company, a technology company, because they are very commercial driven. You have to turn yourself into somebody who can be upgraded, upskilled, who can be reskilled and not let go. Unfortunately, companies are going to make choices even in this COVID period. They are going to have to decide whether to keep all their employees, they're going to decide whether to automate and reduce some of their costs. What would they do with you? Why should they keep you? Because you have the role. It's no longer about the role. It's about the skill you offer. How are you writing your CVs? Have you written a CV that makes the company feel that even if I take him in as a mechanical engineer, he can still work in this, this industry that doesn't require the engineer because of other skill sets that he, put, he, he provides? I really encourage you to start thinking about some of these things I'm mentioning because life is not going to be normal without these skills. The last one is about being creative and being innovative. And I can't emphasize this enough. A lot of scenarios are changing. Things are happening. Pro new problems are occurring. Who would have thought of all of us wearing masks today? 
who would have thought that it will have sanitizers to be used? And look at how quickly some people were able to rise up to the challenge and solve it. People are now coming up with buckets where you just step on and then you wash your hands. You don't need to touch it. Being creative, being innovative, solving the current problems that the new norm is bringing. None of us have experienced this pandemic before. So it's coming with its own challenges, but it's coming with a lot of opportunity. Stop sitting at home mourning over the current situation. I think apart from the wearing of masks and not being to interacting with people, I think it creates huge opportunities for those who are seeing it, for those who are seeing it, for those who are seeing the future. And I really, really encourage you to nurture your creativity. If we are created in the image of God and he's a creator, naturally you are creative. Don't tell yourself it's for those in the arts. No. Creativity is a natural strength, but you need to nurture it. And I encourage you all to look deep within, dream about scenarios, and make them happen. Companies that will survive are companies that are solving problems. I encourage you all, as I conclude, to take your education into your own hands. Learn something new. You'll be amazed what I'm learning since I've been in the house. I'm not learning anything marketing. I'm not learning anything. I'm learning psychology. Can you imagine? Because I've moved on. I'm preparing myself for something else. I'm not telling you. It is important, guys, even at my age. So what about you? You have no excuse. You have no excuse. I need you to be ready because the future is going to be very exciting. Your future is going to be very bright and you must be ready for it. Thank you all. So thank you so much, Patricia. Um, it is such a weird time. It is, um, you know, the new normal as we're mm. in, um, and it's everything is virtual. Um, as CEO of Vodafone, um, tech, the whole virus, the whole COVID era, um, the telcos have had to lead, have had to lead, possibly been some of the biggest winners. Um, how did your company prepare for this kind of era that we're in because we're here now and people were not expecting it. We are here. It's interesting, Amma. So we have been testing business continuity over a period for things like flood, for things like one office getting shut down and we having to work from remote areas. We never thought that this pandemic was going to hit us, you know. And actually, um, in the early part of March, we're actually testing some of our staff working from home, the rest of us here comfortably. And one fine day, we're like, no, guys, everybody has to go home and let's start testing working from home. And we tested this and amazingly, everybody could work. And we said, OK, then why don't we also test the contact center, which was bold because you're going to take 300 people to very remote locations and trust that they'll pick the customer's call and connect to all our systems. And as I speak to you from March till now, everybody in our contact center is sitting in various parts of Accra um, working from home. And we haven't been to the office. The only people who come in, I have just two floors out of the eight open for those who are having issues at home, power situations, and want to come and su submit a file or something like that, they come in and then they go back home. But it's been incredible. So we've spent more effort supporting other companies, other institutions to be able to do what we have been able to do. It's interesting because we are here, it is the new normal. Um, how important is preparation? Preparation, not just within your company, not just be, be, because of what you want to do. When we talk about youth, um, I do feel like there's this notion a lot of times that when you're youthful, you think you have all the time in the world. You think certain things will never happen. You will, you know, and yet at least what this time has taught us is anything could happen. You shared about your own personal experience of pre preparing yourself to where you sit today. Taking it back, um, were you always driven 
to be in the seat that you're in, in today? Or did it seem like, mm, let me just trudge along and see where it takes me? I didn't imagine being a CEO, that I imagined rising. So I'm never content with the current, the role in which I was operating, starting from an intern to an engineer to a manager, up and up and up, you know, to a director, etc. For me, it's always about adding value. What next, how else can I become important to the organization in which I work? And if, if you run through my career profile, it's, it's happened consistently um, throughout. Even in my, I keep telling people the story of my first internship where I was repairing radios, um, just to understand what we were being taught in school and, and try to touch what it means to solder and to put things together on the electronic, <laughs> electronic wow. board and things like that. But always putting your time to good use so that if somebody sits in front of you and wants to talk to you, the person can take something away, you are value to the person. Um, maybe it's how we were brought up, but for me, that has always been my mind. And that's why even sitting at home, I just felt, gosh, I have three months, four months. How, if I go back and somebody asks me, what do you do with your time, what would I say? Actually, I could learn something, right? And that's how I got into uh, the new things I'm doing now. Do you know, it's, um, it's interesting hearing you speak because you started your career as an engineer. Mm -hmm. And I hate to be a cliche in, in what I'm about to say, but a lot of times females tend to move away from engineering because we're not necessarily socialized um, in that way. And this is not just in Africa. I do think um, overall there is a, a change. What was it about engineering that attracted you? Because especially, you know, as a, as a, young, as a young woman, I don't know, most people find it daunting. Oh my, you would laugh at this. It was my easiest path. Hmm. You know, I couldn't do the histories, the economics, the finance, math, physics, chemistry, statistics. Okay, we just underline the answers and we move on. So <laughs> that was my thing. Let me find the course that will just deliver my passion. What I'm good at, I would focus on. I know people do what their parents want, and uh, everybody says, be a doctor, my dear. I couldn't have done biology. <laughs> I could do math. Uh, I could have gone into pharmacy or thing, but I just couldn't do the arts. And so for me, science, math, engineering was my path, and I loved it. I still love it. How, how important do you think it is for um, not just you know girls but Africans to be interested in engineering because engineering has changed over the years you know now engineering is linked to tech in so many other ways mm -hmm. how important in this era do you think young people should be looking at engineering even if they will lead them to other career paths you know think about it the population of Ghana is primarily youth women make 50% of the population Every technology that comes, if you're going to choose a phone for your kids, if your husband is bringing a TV to the house, the wife will have a say. Mm -hmm. We are using these technologies, the woman, why aren't we there influencing the design, influencing how it should be done, you know, because we are the end users. Why are we not there influencing the products that the Vodafones are coming up with? We should be there bringing the female perspective in, into the design because we, we form a significant part of the population. Why are we leaving it to the few? And, and I think it's, it, people have positioned math, science, engineering, technology as something for the male, something for the, for something very difficult, something mm -hmm. that you can't. It actually opens your mind up. You don't have to become an engineer um, just because you are studying math or science. It opens your mind up to what I was talking about previously, about creativity, about problem solving, um, about critical thinking. Those are the, the basics. Um, and, and that's why a lot of kids are now being taught to code. It's not because they want to become developers in future. It's because it wants to open their minds up into how they think and think differently. You know, And we shouldn't limit ourselves to just what we want. Think about what the world is doing. Today, we are going global. You are going to apply for a job sitting in Ghana. You don't even, even need to move um, your bags to go. And the kid you're competing with is sitting in China doing exactly that. Do you think any company will consider you because you're in Africa, you didn't like, you didn't like math, you didn't <laughs> like science? No. We're missing an opportunity because we have put ourselves into it's for the others. Mm. Now, it's basic. It's for the world. It's for, it's for those who want to be part of this future, you know, and... 
I, I just pray that the youth of today will change the mind, will change the mindset, stop being afraid, um, challenge our inner selves. And lots of these things are strengths that we have already. We just don't nurture it. We just don't nurture it. Looking at your career path, um, engineering, law, uh, strategy and marketing, um, you know, and eventually becoming a CEO, uh, there's a thing where most people do where you get into your comfort zone. Yes. You know, engineer, you could have easily been okay being an engineer. In law, oh, Africans, we like <laughs> law. You know, you know, once you got into law, that's always also good. Strategy and marketing, you talked about improving yourself each step of the way. Um, and obviously, eventually CEO. What was it about you that you didn't relax when you say, got to um, into strategy or marketing or law, whatever. Even as a CEO right now, are you relaxed? <laughs> <laughs> I am definitely not, you know, and, and I keep saying that you need, to, you need to aspire. You can decide, some people have decided, you know, life is good where I am. Lying on the sofa and just doing what I'm doing today is good enough. But you must tell yourself that, yeah, it's okay to be where you are, but don't, don't look at the others who have moved and say, oh, how I wish I was there. Because how you wish you were there means preparation. It means putting some ad, adding value to what you have today. What you have today is what got you into the role. But if somebody wanted to elect me into another high office, would it be because I was an engineer and a commercial director at a point? No. He would say, yes, you have been CEO of Vodafone Ghana. What else is there? Why should I move you into this regional role? Why should I move you into this political role? Why should I move you into this other thing? There must be something else. And so I need to start thinking. If I'm satisfied being a CEO, it's fine. After that, I retire, go home, do something easy with my family, and that's it. But if I want to progress, then I have to, in the role, start thinking about that next thing. And that's what the youth, that's the huge opportunity that the youth have in front of them. 20, 25 years. Look at that. How many years is left ahead of you, you know, to explore, to add value and wait for that next opportunity? Because you never know what this new future is bringing. So keep adding to yourself so that when the opportunity comes, you are more than ready. And if you're overqualified, fair enough. But don't be underqualified for it. Okay. Know. One second. Is he in my shots? Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. Cause I, can I continue? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I lost my trail of thought. <laughs> Man, I'm coming. I'm almost there. I'm almost. There. Yes. Okay. Now he's on the shot. I often hear from young people in Ghana, especially when they see successful people, they look at you, and they're like, "Wow, you know, this man is doing amazing. This woman is doing amazing. Wow, you, you. I want to be like you." I'm sure you've heard that many, many times when people look at celebrities, oh, I want to be like you. But I always say to them is, you don't know <laughs> the struggles that takes to being Patricia, sitting in, in the chair. You don't know what anybody's been through. What do you say to young people who see you now, but have not walked to your, 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 your your, your, your blood, sweat and tears, everything which is taking you to get here and they see only the success and yet they want to be where you are. I speak to a few of our youth sometimes and you know they go into the, they come into the job role and he wants to be a manager in two years. I said that's fantastic but how much of your current role do you understand? She doesn't even understand what he's doing. You know we are all in a hurry and it's fine to be ambitious but you have to build depth in whatever you're doing. We talked about baking before we started. And you know, you can, uh, yeah, I bake. Do you understand the measurement? Do you understand why egg goes in before butter or butter goes in before egg? Hmm. How much depth do you have? So how better are you than the other person? Because don't forget, there are five, six people competing for the same role. Five thousands <laughs> competing <laughs> for the baking, same role. You know? yes. and, and they should not look at me and say, oh, she's there and I've, I wasn't the most excellent student in my class, and that's the basic requirement before you become CEO. It requires passion around what you do, understanding what you are doing, being committed to it. I, I want to start from national service. I want to move into a job role. What sacrifice will it take? 
I did not take any vacation. I'm from first from my first year to final year, I always worked every vacation. Sometimes I was paid, sometimes I wasn't paid. I would travel with the guys across the country with my bag always packed, going to install base stations, degree or no degree, so what? You know, and the sacrifices that you make along the way, but throughout those journeys, you want to learn. When I moved from my technology director role into the commercial role, everybody said, yeah, if you look at the number of people you manage, 500 people in technology, so coming to manage less than 500 in the commercial role, are you taking a smaller job? No. I was putting myself through a learning process to build up a new skill which I didn't have, you know. So they should not beat themselves to say, I'm not good enough. Neither should they say, I'm too good to be there. I think if you start from, I can do it, then what will it take to become Patricia? What will it take to get there? I need to make sacrifices. I need to work hard. I need to use my time valuably. I need to build new skills. I need to be there when I'm working. Somebody must know I work hard. This is one thing I've been telling the youth. Do not go into a company, work so hard, and by the time you walk out of the door after national service, nobody remembers you. Why? Somebody must remember that you were there and you added value. It didn't matter that you were learning um, from what the company is doing. You added some value because of your skill set that you bring on board. You know, you were there to, to do something new and they say, no, we think we should keep this guy. Mm. Or after five years, let's look after him. If they see your CV again, oh, I remember this guy. There must be something that you always leave on the table and somebody must remember you for it. So the hard work along the journey, your commitments, your passion, the sacrifices you make, and adding value to yourself along the journey. Don't forget God. I'm a Christian, so mm -hmm. I will not forget God. Make sure you carry, God, God carries you along the way because you can't do this by yourself, you know. But it's possible. It's possible. It's, look at me. It's possible. I like that. And just to end up, um, confidence. Hmm. Confidence, I think, can be the difference between two people, uh, probably one more qualified than the other, but there's other person that has that confidence and belief, mm. can actually win that job mm. over the person, over the, the one that's a bit more timid. Mm. Um, I, I find sometimes a lot of our young people don't always, they can be bold amongst their friends, but then when, as soon as they enter into a corporate setting or in any kind of formal setting, they shrink. What do you say to our young people in terms of, you know, not just believing in yourself, but having that confidence um, to go into any you know situation and when you know why they don't have the confidence sometimes because they don't know that's one people usually lack confidence when they lack knowledge about the subject so I am not sure I will survive this conversation I'm not sure I will be able to do this presentation in the boardroom so somebody should lead the other one is self that's self-worth I don't think I am worth that, that knowledge I even have. So the person has the knowledge, but does not believe that he, he owns the rights to that, you know, and can claim it. So it's not sure can stand in front of people and talk about what you know. Start from the point that the people you are talking to are ready to listen to you because they probably don't know what you know. They don't know what you know. If I can't find any, any introvert than me, you'll be amazed, right? Wow. <laughs> I, I deal wow. with my situation when it comes. I speak to large audiences, not because I am this extrovert. I'm the, but I, I have trained myself to come to the point of understanding that you, are, you have been put there because people have confidence in you. Why wouldn't you have confidence in yourself? Open your mouth and say what comes out of your head. They will listen. It's, 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 it's the lack of self-worth. I can't, I don't sh I'm not sure I am good enough to do this. I'm not sure why, what if I say it and they don't listen to me? Self-doubt. Yeah. A lot of that happens. And it's, it's, it's all about training yourself. It's all about saying good things to yourself, reading scripture, building your own confidence and telling yourself, I'm good. Mm. You know, I'm alive because there's a reason. People are dead. I'm alive. There must be a purpose for me, you know. And so if, if the marketing director has invited you to join a team to the boardroom to present. That's the first point. He invited you to join the team. Step in. What can go wrong? You're in the boardroom. Mm. Do not hide behind three years. Sometimes I watch them, I'm saying, 
if only this person will open the mouth, you know, and say what you know, because you are there because you are good. And when you throw a question at them, they say the most amazing things. So we should also help. I think um, when you meet somebody who is, who is good, but is lacking the confidence, we should help with encouragement. People lack that encouragement. Reinforce it. Re tell the person he's good. Keep, keep saying it to people. I got somebody to say that to me as well. You're good. I think you can be a CEO. You're good. I think you can be a CEO. It encourages you, you know, so we should do that for one another as well. But please, as an individual, self-worth is important. You are, you are better than you think. You are better than you think. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Um, thank you for uh, taking time to speak with the youth across, uh, not just Ghana, across Africa and different parts of the world um, for the IS. A virtual edition we're here uh, and it's it's the new normal so thank you so much my pleasure well i hope you've enjoyed this edition of the interactive session of is 2020 the virtual edition i've been speaking with the ceo of vodafone ghana mrs patricia obonai i hope you've enjoyed everything that she has said remember believe in yourself you can do it my name is amike Ababrese, and thank you for joining us Um, let me first of all say, glory be to the almighty God. Amen. Since I started, I have never been present physically before. And what I know is, distance is not a barrier. I started following Pastor Brian. And this gave me the chance to watch all the videos of IS on YouTube and Facebook. In fact, it really inspired me. I mean the videos that I watch without coming to IS physically. Before 2014, I knew how yogurt is being produced. But anytime I try to package it in a bottle to establish a business, some people discourage me and I also discourage myself. But after watching the videos, something came into me. And it gingered me, in fact. So I said to myself, I will, I can, and I must. And I took the bold step. I went to the FDA, Food and Drugs Authority. They tried to discourage me. But because of the power I have had from the messages of IS. The money never scared me. I gathered my national service allowance. And now, by the grace of the almighty God, I have the FDA registration number and now the product is all over Ghana. It can travel to any African country and this is the product. I want to tell any youth, anybody here, no matter your age, if you have this quote in mind, you can do it because I have done it. Thanks be to the organizers of IS. Thanks be to Pastor Brian. I will take this opportunity to urge all the youth of Ghana to begin something because it's time for we to rise as a country. In fact, I said to myself, the moment I got here, I came all the way from Techimai. The moment I entered this auditorium and I saw the partners, I told myself, next year, I'm from your God to be a partner. <laughs> the 
this is my motivation. Next year, by this time, God willing, we want to hear more of this from us. Now, the only hindrance that is to me is transportation. To transport this product to the world. I told myself this product is going global. And I know as IES is now becoming more popular and popular, I will be energized to send this product higher and higher. Oh, yes. Thank you, organizers. Thank you, Pastor Brian. God bless you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I guess you are being so, so blessed. And trust me, I'm going to introduce a man to you. A man that has been a personal blessing unto me. He is my spiritual father. He's the senior pastor of the All Nations Church in Atlanta, Georgia, Dr. Franco Fusiopia. This is the third time we are having him speak unto the youth of Ghana at the IS conference. This man is an embodiment of wisdom. Please do me a favor. I want you to share the video. Yes, I'm waiting for you to share. I want a hundred people to share it right now that we are about to drink from the well of this great man. Ladies and gentlemen, your life will never be the same. Dr. Franco Fusopia is the CEO and the executive director of the Advanced Life Leadership Institute. A man that when I came in contact with has changed my perspective about life and ministry. And I know that 2020, the virtual experience, your life will never be the same. IS 2020, help me welcome with a standing ovation. Yes, wherever you are, just stand, shout and clap and let's welcome all the way from Atlanta, Georgia, Dr. Frank Ofosu up here. God bless you. Hello, IS. Greetings from Atlanta, Georgia, to all of you. You know, all things being equal, we should have been there in person like we've done over the years. But you and I know that these are not normal days. Uh, there's a pandemic raging all over the world. But you know something? The work of God will still go on. The agenda of God will still go on. Nothing has the ability to stop what God wants to do. So greetings again, and it is my pleasure to be with you in this session. I want first of all to acknowledge Pastor Brian and his wonderful team for all the great work that they put together, and especially the media team. You've done an amazing work, and God richly bless you. We are taking over the airwaves for the Lord Jesus. Listen, I told Pastor Brian I was bringing a team with me all the way from Atlanta, but of course, because of whatever is happening, we couldn't bring them. And so I'm going to showcase them to you. They are some of the finest in the land, and they are here with me right here in this sanctuary. And so in the next few minutes, you're going to hear from Pastor Prince and his team and uh, all the players over here, and after that, I'll come and talk to you. So, IS, let's welcome Prince and his team. God bless you. And I'll come back to you in a few minutes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless him wherever you are. We serve a mighty God. The Bible says that the angels bow down and they declare that holy, holy, holy is our Lord. For we are made worship unto him. Wherever you are, watching this live from every continent, from every country, just lift your voice and just bless him in your own language and in your own tongue. Lift your voice and bless his name, somebody give him glory. He is worthy to be praised. Father, we exalt you. We say you are holy God, we bless your name, oh God. Take some five seconds for bless his name. He's a mighty God, God we love you. He's a holy God. Somebody left your voice and bless his name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. You alone a mighty God, you alone. We bless your name. We give you praise, oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh, my soul, long air. 
your voice and help me sing. As the tears say, Panted for the waters of my soul.
say and father we declare that we love you we declare our everlasting love for you wherever you are declare with me say father we declare that we love you yes we declare our everlasting love for you somebody on the scene say father we no God like our God. In the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of our troubles and our trials and everything that seeks to limit us, there's no God like our God. Thank you. Thank you, my team. The best team that any human being can ever get. This is a dream team that makes the dream work. Amen. So I, has, I just want to spend some few minutes, this 20 something minutes with you. And um, I want to start off by again thanking Pastor Brand for making it possible for us to come to you and the media team and everybody who has been part of this great and a, a big shout out to all the behind the scene movers and the shakers. Um, what a wonderful time to be alive. It's an interesting time to be alive. And I know that some of you wish that you lived in easier times. But what you've got to understand is that easy is not for champions. I say it all the time that if being a champion was easy, everybody would be one. And God knows that 
You'll be born in such a time as this because he believes in you that you can handle it. It's a pleasure to speak to you, the youth of Africa. You are our hope. You are our future. And I believe that regardless of how the world goes, you have what it takes to bring the world to its right place. There is nothing wrong with this world that cannot be fixed with what is right with you. I want to repeat it. There is nothing wrong with this world that cannot be fixed with what is right with you. I know that we are living in unprecedented times, but what is happening in the world today may be unprecedented to, unpre unprecedented to you and I, but not to our God. God has you covered, and God has me covered. Because he's on record, he's the only one who is on record as saying that, I declare the end from the beginning, saying that my counsel shall stand. God knows you, God believes in you, God knows that he has loaded you with great things. That is why you are alive in these crazy times. You know, the theme for IS 2020 is breaking limits. And I know some of the speakers have done justice to it. And so I just want to add a few building blocks to whatever has been put there already. And I believe that breaking limits is so appropriate, especially for the times that we live in. In my travels, in my observations, in my leadership, I realized that a lot of people have been put behind bars of limitations. Some of these limitations are self-imposed. Others are people-imposed. Some too are situation and circumstances imposed. But I believe, I have the persuasion and the belief that before this conference ends, before these few days end, IS 2020 ends, whatever has held you back, whatever has been designed to put you behind some limitations will have no choice but to let you go. God is about to do something in your life. And let me tell you a little story, a very true story. In fact, it's in one of my books, Journey into Destiny. The story is told about a traveling circus. They were traveling all over Europe. They were gypsies and they had this circus of animals. And the star animal in this circus was a brown bear. And this brown bear was put in a cage that was 12 foot by 12 foot. That's all the bear had. And this bear was really abused. It was starved. Sometimes they, 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 they stuck cigarette ends in its body. I mean, they abused this bear. And one day, one of the famous zoos, Hildeberg Zoo in Germany, heard about it. And so they contacted this, these gypsies and they made them an offer to buy this sorry bear. Well, they paid everything, and then they got this bear. They loaded the bear to a flat bear truck, and they took it to the zoo. Now, they took this huge 12 by 12 cage that had this bear in, and they brought it to the zoo, and they opened the doors of this cage. And what they were expecting was that this bear would just jump out with joy, with excitement, because they were rolling hills, salmon-filled rivers. I mean, this is true freedom. This sorry bear that has spent most or all her life moving 12 foot by 12 foot looked out at the beauty and the majesty of the surroundings. And everybody was excited. They were expecting him to just get out. The bear put down her head and started pacing 12 foot by 12 foot. 12 foot in the cage. Now, the zoo was a little bit troubled and so they found a way to force this little bear out into the open. And so they forced it out into the open and they took the cage away. And now the bear surely must begin to run around in freedom. The bear looked around the, all the, the places and was, ex you, you could feel, maybe there was an excitement, but no. This little sorry bear bowed its head again and started moving 12 foot by 12 foot. 12 foot. That's what it kept doing day after day until the zoo had no other alternative but to put it down. It became news in the newspapers. And people started asking questions. Why is it that the, the, the bear couldn't move? What, what, is, what was holding it back? And somebody said something that was so appropriate. Said the barrier that limited this sorry bear was not the metal barriers, but mental barriers. And for many people today listening to me, what is holding you is not a metal barrier, but it is a mental barrier. So in this few minutes, in 20-something minutes, I want to talk to you about Thinking big in small places. Wherever you find yourself, that is small, that is limiting. This thing called your mind can bring you a breakthrough. 
And I, w- I want to read a couple of scriptures from Genesis chapter 13, verse number 14 to 17. From the Message Bible, Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 through 17. Very familiar scripture. From the Message, it says, After Lot had separated from Abraham, Lot, Lot was Abraham's nephew, separated, God said to Abraham, Open your eyes, look around, look north, south, east, and west. Everything you see, the whole land spread out before you, I will give to you and your children forever. I will make your descendants like dust. Counting the descendants will be as impossible as counting the dust of the earth. So on your feet, Abraham, get moving. Walk through the land, walk through the country, its land, its breadth. I am giving all of it to you. Abraham moved his tent. And it, the story goes on and on and on. This is important. This is part of Abraham's journey as a patriarch. Now, if you know anything about Abraham, he didn't start like Abraham. He started as Abraham. He was a heathen man. But Abraham had to break a series of limitations in order to become the man that he became later. You've got to understand that life is not going to offer you anything on a silver platter. Life is not cheap. The God that you and I serve is not El Chipo. He's El Shaddai. Life is not cheap. Life is a series of barriers. Life is a series of obstacles. Sometimes life will throw you things that you never signed up for. Abraham started in obscurity. Abraham started as a heathen. Abraham started as a person who had no reference point when he came to God. What he was doing was something that had never been done before. To hear from a God you never know and to go to a place you've never been to. The book of Hebrews says that by faith, Abraham obeyed. When he was called to go out to a place for which he was received as an inheritance, he went out not knowing where he was to go. By faith, he dwelt in the land of promise, as in a strange land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, hence with him of the same promise, for he looked forward to a city which had foundations, which builder and maker is God. But Abraham started from a small place, a limiting culture, to become one of the greatest men that the world has ever known. Hear me, young one, the youth of Africa, hear me. You live in a time and you live in nations where things are rough. Yes, things are really, really rough, especially with this, you know, COVID pandemic. And many of you are resigning yourself to the lie that there's no hope. Anytime I come to Africa and anytime I talk to you young ones, I hear you quote politicians a lot that unless you you throw a particular party line or you become something, there's no hope. Let me tell you something. Your future is not in the hands of a politician. Your future is in the hands of God. In fact, your future is not ahead of you. Your future is resident on the inside of you. There is hope. There is life. And God, by God, something big is about to happen in your life. I want to give you some four quick keys in these few minutes that I've got left that will help you to break limits in your life. I look at Abraham as our template. And some of the things that Abraham did that helped him to break barriers. And the first thing that you've got to do is to have a mindset change. A mindset change. Because one of the greatest discoveries you will ever make in order to break barriers is that you can start it by changing your mind. There's no place that you cannot go if you start with your mind, your imagination. Like the, the, the 12 foot by 12 foot shuffle, many of you, your thinking has been limiting you. It's not metal bars. It's not people's bars. It's not national bars. It is mental bars. I know you pray a lot. You are very prayerful in Africa. I know you pray a lot. But I've met a lot of prayerful fools. Because you pray, but your thinking can nullify all the fasting and all the prayer you've made. I'll give you a scripture to prove that. In Ephesians chapter 3, in verse number 20, the apostle Paul makes a very interesting statement. He says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, Now note it carefully, above all that we ask and think, above all that we ask prayer and think. So Paul elevates your thinking to the level of your prayer. You can pray and fast until the cows come home. But if you have stinking thinking, you are going to have stinking living. Your body will never go where your mind has not first been. And so please refuse to be limited by all the barriers that they have placed in your mind. Some cultures have barriers. Societies have barriers. Families have barriers. Religious prison houses. There are sometimes we call them churches or mosques or things. They are religious prison houses that have incarcerated people because of wrong thinking. I am sent all the way today to limit you from everything. To, to liberate you from everything that is limiting you. 
Your mentality must be liberated. You must go to places that your family said you could never go to. Hear me. If it never happened to your father, that doesn't mean it will never happen to you. If your mother couldn't break that barrier, it doesn't mean you, can, you could not break it. You are a different species. God has placed you on earth for a reason and for a purpose. And so long as you have a heartbeat in your chest and breath in your nostrils, there's a future for you. Determine that no matter what it is, you are going to break that barrier. Hear me. The only obstacle, and I'm going to put it out there on, 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 on your screen for you. The only obstacle that is standing between you and your success is your mindset. Think about that. The only obstacle. Listen, there's no mountain anywhere. Everybody's mountain is in your mind. The way you think is very, very important. If you have stinking thinking, you have stinking living. And your thinking affects your talking and your talking affects your movement. And so from today, I yes, hear me. Youth of Africa, hear me. You must start thinking differently. Reject all the religious poison that you cannot break through on this particular continent. That you can Listen, I've traveled in many nations of the world. I've been to wealthy nations and I've been to desperately poor nations. And you know something? No matter how poor a nation is, there are still rich people there. What exempts you from that? It's your thinking. The world today, with all this pandemic, we are beginning to realize that there's a level playing field. And so refuse to be, to be limited by your thinking. It is time to break out. Paul said that be transformed by the removing, not the, re, not, not the removing, but the renewing, not the removing. Don't remove your mind. We need your mind. Take your mind to church. Take your mind to the mosque. Take your mind wherever you go. It's very important. It's a key to your breakthrough. Listen, and if you are going to think, you better think big. You know why? Because thinking is free. Have a, mental, have a mental renovation today. We have, we, we have been praying for spiritual revival. We've been praying for all kinds of revival. But can you begin to believe God for a mental revival? Mindset change. God had to change Abraham's mindset. Now listen, look around. Where you are going to is better than where you are coming from. And so let there be a mental change. Number two, number two, you must have a relationship change. A relationship change. You realize in verse number 14 that after Lot had separated from Abraham, the Lord came in and said to Abraham, now I'm ready to do business with you. You see, so long as Lot was with Abraham, God was not ready to break him free. Please listen. There are some people in your life, I'm not saying they are evil, I'm not saying they are bad, but they don't belong on your team. And sometimes it is not even evil people who stop you. It's the good people who stop you. The people who know you. The people who give you suggestions that, oh, I've known you all my life. And that you cannot do anything. Hear me, young one. It is time to evaluate who is on your team. It's not everybody who is qualified to be on the front row seat of your life. There are several occasions that Jesus will go to a place to go and do some miracles, raise the dead. In fact, one time he was going to Jairus' house. His whole team, the 12 disciples went with him. But when he came to the cross of the matter, the Bible says that he only took two of the disciples and told the rest to wait. I'm sure their feelings were hurt. And in your life, as you go forward to break limits, there are some people who must, who must just wait for you whilst you go and do some things. Their feelings will hurt, but they are okay. You may get on their nerves, find the nerves that they are on and just get off it. And understand that when it comes to the issues of life and death, Sometimes, head feelings just don't matter. There are the people that you constantly associate with will either help you or hurt you. May I say something to you? There are no neutral people in your life. Never forget this. There are no neutral people in your life. Abraham had to leave his family. Abraham had to leave familiar people. It's the same all through the scriptures you see it. For God to raise up David to be a mighty king. He took David from his father Jesse's house and sent him into another house for him to be trained. Samuel was taken from Elkanah's house and he was given to Eli for him to be trained. All kinds of people had to be taken from familiar territory. And sometimes the, the, the territory that you are in, the people you relate with, they are the number one people who can stop you. Do you remember the story of David? When he went to the war front and he saw an opportunity to solve a national problem called Goliath. He began to ask around that what shall it be done? What's the reward that shall be given to the person who takes out this giant? And by the way, 
before you commit yourself to any battle, find the reward first. Many of you fight battles that have no reward. You finish fighting and you are even tired and there's nothing to show. David was very pragmatic. David was smart. He said, what is, I want to consider the reward first before I put my life at risk. And they said, well, David, you know, there are three great things. Number one, um, if you take down this giant, the king will give you his daughter. David said, bring it on. I mean, that was good motivation enough. Number two, you will not pay taxes. And number three, the king will shower you with all kinds of things. You see, the reward must motivate you to do something. The Bible says that Jesus, because of the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Don't fight battles that have no spoils. Don't commit yourself to things that have no reward. You have to understand that. You have to be smart. Don't follow anybody and fight their fight for them. Don't just follow anybody because, oh, he's my friend. If they are fighting a foolish battle, please don't do that. Don't go and, go, don't go and die on, some, on somebody's altar. Don't borrow anybody's offense. Know the reward. And David went and they said, this is the reward. And David said, I'll take down this giant. And remember his brother said, who do you think you are? You are impetuous. We know you. You've been around us all the time. Who, do you, who exactly do you think you are? We don't care about you. What makes you think you can do this? And remember that before then, right in their presence, David had been anointed by Samuel as king. But the brothers refused to accept it. Hear me. There are some people in your house they have seen everything that God can do with you, but because they think they know you, in fact, they change your diapers when you're a baby, they refuse to acknowledge that. And so sometimes, the only price that you have to pay is to forsake some relationships. Do you know that there are some people that you call friends who are, in fact, frenemies? If you have, have such friends, you don't, you, don't, you don't need enemies. They are just excess baggage in your life. They are worse than jealous. They will laugh with you but they don't wish you well. And listen, every kind of thing that people do to you, they leave clues. And if constantly they've been doing that to you in the family, in their relationship, in their friendship, when are you going to wake up and smell the coffee? Please hear me. Destiny is calling you, youth of Africa. Something big is calling you, youth of Africa. Look around you and understand that it's not everybody who is happy for you. And it's not everybody who will help you get to where you are. In the year 2000, we had the Olympic Games in Sydney, Australia. Very interesting. And the United States women's team, they won the 4 by 400 meters. Hands down. Gold medal. They were amazing. Jal Miles, Marion Jones. I mean, these women were fabulous. They had trained for years. They, they were just amazing. I love track, so I was just rooted to the thing. They won the gold medal. They were celebrated. Newspapers celebrated them. Television celebrated them. A few years later, a few years later, the International Olympic Committee wrote to those four women to demand their gold medals back. Because Marion Jones had been caught that during that time, she had taken drugs, anabolic steroids, which was not proper. And so they were disqualified. Their record was taken, and now they wanted the medals. And the other three women, they went for attorneys. They, 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 they argued that, well, we didn't do anything. We trained hard. We did it fair. We ran fair. So why must you do this to us? And the reply that the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, gave was that we are taking the medals not because you did anything wrong, but because of who you ran with. Please listen to me. Who are you running with in life? Who are you going with in life? Understand me. Destiny is big. And so you must know who you are running with, youth of Africa. So Abraham had a mindset, there should be a change in your mindset. And must also be a change in your relationships. The third thing that I want to give to you is new exposure. New exposure. New exposure. The Lord said to Abraham, lift up your eyes and look around. Which means Abraham had been almost walking in autopilot. Until the Lord said, Abraham, can you open your eyes and look around and see what is happening? Listen, there's breakthrough in Africa. There's breakthrough in your neighborhood. There's breakthrough in your community. But God must open your eyes to this possibility. Listen, if you're a Christian, God has given you a gift and it's the gift of eyes. You don't see with your eyes. You must see through your eyes. It's called vision. You must see what ordinary people don't see. Abraham, when Lot lifted his eyes, he chose all the places that were good, the places that were, were, were lush with greenery, it was luxuriant with growth. 
And so Abraham was left with almost nothing. The leftovers. But God said, Abraham, from where you are, lift up your eyes because there are possibilities. I want to expose you to something that your eyes have not seen. Please, what makes you think that if your MP or your member of parliament loses an election, you have no future? What makes you think that so and so says that they've taken everything away, you have no future? Hear me and hear me well, youth of Africa. Your future is not in the hands of anybody. Your future is not in the hands of a pastor, of a prophet, of an imam, of a politician. Your future is not even ahead of you. I've said it. Let me say it again. Your future is in you. It is time to release that future and break through. And that depends on the fact that you must lift up your eyes and let your eyes be open. Two people were sent to an island in the Pacific to go and sell shoes. In fact, one person went first. Took all the shoes to the island. After a few weeks, wrote a letter back and said, please come get me because I can't sell any shoes. The people on the island, they don't wear shoes. So he was taken away and another one was sent. And the guy went to the same place and in two weeks wrote a letter and said, can you bring more shoes? Because I'm teaching people how to wear shoes. Your problem is not the problem. The way you see the problem is a problem. And that is exposure. Your eyes must be open. Let me tell you a story about a man called Simon Peter. I've studied a little after, after that guy. Simon Peter was a fisherman. All his life he had fished the Galilee Sea. I mean he knew fishing inside and out. Maybe he even had degrees in physiology. You saw his boat. It was Simon Peter, bachelor in physiology, master's in aquatic biology. Uh, well, he failed his PhD because he was always failing. But listen, Simon Peter had fished all his life around the, the, the sea. He knew the sea inside out. Never did it occur to this man that a human being could walk on the sea. In fact, he knew that people sank on the sea. But one day, he had followed a man who was different, who sees things different. And Simon Peter was, was, was in a boat and he sees his mentor Jesus walking on the sea, on water. Really? People do this? In fact, they were scared. And Jesus said, no, no, it's me. And Simon Peter said, listen, if it is you, I want to do the same thing that you are doing. You see, it never occurred to Simon Peter he could do it until somebody exposed him to that possibility. So I am asking you a question. Who is exposing you to something? Because once you get exposed, nobody can unexpose you. Once you see possibility, nobody can, can take that possibility from you. In fact, one of the greatest forms of favor is exposure. When God exposes you to great people, great places, and great things, many a times we abuse the privilege of exposure because we don't understand. We abuse it with jealousy. We abuse it with familiarity. But I pray, youth of Africa, that God Almighty will expose you to things that will open your mind, that will open you to possibilities, that will help you stop being a village champion and go to places where you are exposed to things that make you look stupid and go and do amazing things. And the final thing is that you must make a move. If you are going to break any barrier, you can't sit down and be docile. You can't sit down and be blasé, just haphazard. You can't just sit down and say, well, it's going. God said, no, Abraham, get up. Remember what we read. He said, Abraham, get up, make a move. I'm telling somebody here today, there is a dream in your heart. There's a vision in your heart. There's a course you need to take. There's an adjustment you need to make. Why are you sitting down? Get up and make a move. The Lord said to Abraham, get up from where you are. Start from somewhere. You can go everywhere you want to go by starting from where you are. Listen, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. I want to repeat it, young one. You don't have to be great to start, but you have to be, you have to be, you have to be, you have to start to be great. I beg your pardon. There are great things, there are great things in your country. There are great things in your neighborhood. There are great things resident on the inside of you. Listen, there's a future wife where you are. There's a future husband where you are. There's a destiny helper where you are. There are businesses where you are. There is a job where you are. There's a new idea that will catch global fire where you are. There's a possibility that you can be the first millionaire in your family where you are. There's the possibility that you can be the first president or the prime minister or legislator, wherever, wherever you are. Determine that you're not going to wait for everything to return to normal before you make a move. 
I know there's a lot of uncertainty in the world. There's fear. There's apprehension. But, but hear this. Favor. Fortune, I beg your pardon, favors the bold. Fortune favors the bold. Stop limiting yourself with what if. My question is what if not. Anytime I'm about to pray for the sick and I've seen miraculous things happen. Anytime without fear. You see, the enemy is not original. Anytime I begin to pray for the sick, I hear a voice. What if they don't get healed? When I was young, I used to get troubled by that. Until I learned to speak back and ask the devil, what if they get healed? Listen, break every limitation and stop. If you have to change your course, please do it. Make an adjustment. Before we had all these sophisticated systems that guided the space shuttles, once upon a time, they weren't, they weren't as sophisticated. And so what they did was that before they shot the astronauts, Houston would tell them that we are shooting you up there, but make adjustments as you go. Can that apply to you today? We are on our way somewhere, but make adjustments. If you have to stick with something too, Please stick with it. Learn something new during this pandemic. There's so much time on your hands. Do something. Look for new opportunities and break through. I am confident that I will meet you again one day. When I meet you, I don't want any long stories. I want you to tell me, Pastor Frank, thank you for that word. I changed my mindset. Thank you for that word. There were some relationships that were killing me and I had to change them. Thank you that I put myself in a position where I was exposed to possibilities. And I've never come back. And you know something? I used to sit waiting for something to happen. But I determined that I'll get up and do something. And because of that, this is where I am. Listen, one day you will meet God. And when you meet him, you know something? My prayer is that Jesus will shake your hands and say, Thank you. I had a blast living in your body. Whatever is your limitation, I pray for you. That by God and by his wisdom, that limitation will break. My name is Franco Fusuapia. And I love you. And I'll see you in another session. Have a good day. Bye-bye. All right. Blessing, blessing. What a blessed morning. It's been wonderful. I mean, IS 2020, the virtual edition, the experience is great. And I can see you joining from different locations. And you know, I want you to uh, uh, type, let us know where you are watching from, whether from America, London, Holland, Mamobi, uh, Kumasi, uh, Takrade, uh, wherever. Let's have a conversation. Let us know where you are watching from. Uh, type, 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 let's know where you're watching from. So let's, let us see it on the screen. Where you're watching from here, yeah, some are watching from Holland. Okay, from Amsterdam, all right. Okay, Asante Bekwai, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Wow, 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 it's been great. I mean, we had a wonderful session with the CEO of Vodafone and, and she said such an amazing things deep thinking, thought provoking, uh, it's, it's a revolutionary thinking uh, and if you are, you've joined this session, I don't want you to just listen and just go. No, these are words that are transforming our lives and it's been wonderful. And what can I say about our own father, Bishop Frank of Fosua Pia? I believe that my, 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 my notes part is full now. Such wisdom that is able to shape in our life. And joining us in this Studio B, we have one man that I, I have known for, for years, and he is the president of IS, the International Youth Empowerment Summit. I want to say something very brief about this man. I know he, he doesn't like it when uh, we're talking about him, but hey, you know, uh, for this virtual edition to come on today, the, the, the meetings that he will call all the technical people and we'll be having meetings of a meeting because he has such an excellent spirit. 
you will bring this in he will say i don't like it do it this way do it that way and he always makes sure that whatever we bring because he, he is uh, spearheading a movement of people who will have an excellent way of doing things and we have this powerful wonderful amazing man and one thing that he said that i've never forgotten that life it is said that life begins at 40 but he will say that life begins when you find your purpose people help me welcome the president pastor brian jones i'm watching all right all right all right all right thank you thank you thank you each and everyone and um thank you pastor isaac i am enjoying myself here all the way in london of course all the way in london and um, um, i would want to say a big thank you to the whole media team um, um, the, the, the whole media team the whole IOS team We've done so amazing, we've done so amazing, and I know we've had this night. Let's go out. I'm so excited to see the good team away from Australia, from Vincent, from Ghana, from the night, and I know we have been blessed. So thank you so much, Pastor Isaac. Thank you, thank you so much, Pastor Isaac. And um, I want to say thank you to, of course, the CEO of Vodafone, my own sister, um, Madam Patricia Obonai, that was so phenomenal. Thank you so much. It has been just so inspiring. And to my spiritual father, Dr. Frank of Ethiopia, um, I don't know what to say, of course. I know he already knows what I ought to say. But if we were at the National Theatre, we were going to, of course, get questions and answers with Dr. Frank. But because it's virtual, I said that no matter what, I have to come in and uh, leave this question and answer time with Dr. From here to um, have a short time, probably like 30 minutes, question and answers with Dr. Frank. And so please help me welcome all the way from Atlanta, Georgia. Dr. Frank of Australia. Hello, Pastor Brian. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm very humble. I'm very humble to have you here. And um, um, I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me too, Pastor Brian. Thank you. I'm excited. You know, I'll serve you any day, morning, noon, and night. <laughs> all right that is so um i was following um, um your presentation thinking big in small places and following everything number one how we should change our mind i like it when you said of course i am a revivalist but when you highlighted on mental revival that was just of the hook number two you you also advised us on relationship change number three you told us on having a new and number four how we should make a move i know a whole lot of people have questions that i'm going to read the question so obviously but i have a question personally this is my personal question um i think the ceo of vodafone highlighted on a bit of it but for the sake of the hundreds of people tuning in all over the world I want you to really help me with this. Some few weeks ago, I was following your presentation um, on Bishop Crepe's page and a statement. I want every young person to understand what is really going on. Number one, the world is changing, comma. The world has changed. There is something about the frog that of adaptability and adjustment you can adjust both in water and on the dry ground dr frank the world is changing the world has changed young people of africa what should we do 
I think, thank you again, Pastor Brian, for having me, and thank you for all, all your team members and everybody, and um, also Madam Patricia. I um, mean, I was just, I, I didn't want her to stop. But it's, it's very true, unless you are living under a rock, you will agree with me that the world has changed. Anytime there is a change, people who don't adapt are left behind. Wow. wow. Anytime there's a change, people who don't adapt become irrelevant. When, when, when watches were in, in, in vogue, you know, we had Swiss watches. They were very expensive. They were the me mechanical watches from Switzerland. Everybody wanted one. Until yeah. a new idea came about, quartz watches. And it was suggested to the Swiss that this is the new thing. They never bought into it. And then the Japanese got hold of quartz watches, digital watches. And now mechanical watches are no more in vogue. Nokia, the president of Nokia, cried at one of his last, the, C, the CEO of Nokia, cried at one of the last meetings because he said, we did nothing wrong. Yet we have competition in this world because Steve Jobs and other people brought better technology. Adaptability is very important. You see, there's no point in worshiping at the altar of something that is past. The most dangerous place to be is to be at, at where God used to be. You must be current. You must move. You, you must understand the times. You must know what is happening in the world today. And, and then just and adapt yourself. Which means to be, Pastor Brian, and also to the youth of Ghana, that some of the courses that you took in the university which are totally irrelevant to you. you must dare to take new courses let me tell you for example i mean i've been to i've been to school you know that i, I don't even want to go in there at the age of 58 right most of the school done for some time to do with my calling so theology all of these things okay i did my master's in leadership and that, that kind of thing but i determined that if i am going to be relevant to the world today conditions opinion leaders and all kinds of things i needed to do something so you know it i used to fly from atlanta to belgium the service university yeah. my in my cohort were nato nato officials and everything and i did an executive mba in governance and development policy you know so it is adaptation so for me pastor brian people must look at their situation where they are right now and if whatever they are doing is not necessary today they must dare to change. It may be difficult, it may be threatening, but they must dare to change. Mm. Remember, I made a statement that f fortune mm. favors the bold. You must be bold to give up what is not happening. Because if the horse that yeah. you are riding is dead, dismount, get off it, and start it. I, I hope I've made a little bit of sense. Wow, 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 wow. Yes, 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 yes. That is more than wisdom that is more than wisdom thank you so much i have a question here i have a question here that i'm going to read and um, um, um i know definitely you are going to help us okay i think this is in relation to your point on the relationship change dr frank how do you manage or balance emotions of people you will hurt want to lose them especially your parents you've got to understand this thing that we are social beings we are created as social beings um you can't do you can't do life alone we are all social beings we all are interconnected with one another by time and for the sake of what we do like christians you realize that for many people who became world leaders and god used seriously he disconnected them from family I'm not saying you should be cold-hearted because sometimes the people that know you best are the ones who know you least. Wow. The people who wow. think they know you best, they know you least. And some time ago, I posted one of these things on my page and I said, I, last year, I went to my hometown in Kofrodia, Ghana. And of course, you know, people knew me, but they don't know who I have become. So I made this example with Jesus that in his hometown, when he went to his hometown, the people who saw him as a carpenter maybe only had their doors fixed. But the people who saw him as a messiah had their lives fixed. And so there wow. comes a time that 
you must harness your emotion. That is emotional intelligence. And look into your life and realize where you are going and understand that sometimes you have to make a change. I'm not saying you should be cold-hearted and just cut people off and just offend people. But there comes a time that with wisdom, you have to put distance between you and especially people who have known you all your life in order to become something. Sometimes the only price you have to pay for greatness is to forsake familiar, familiar grounds. It's important. Yeah. You've got to, at a point. You see, you're, you're, I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying you should cut people off and just not have anything to do with them. But mentally and emotionally, you must move on. Because you will never be able to deliver people if you have not been delivered from people. Whoa, can, can, can you please say that again? Please. I, I said you will never be able to deliver people if you have not first been delivered from people. It's important that you understand Whoa. that. Because the people that you that know you will always keep you at one place. David's brothers, they said, who do you think you are? You can't take down this giant. You are impetuous. What have you come to look at? You know, they just beat him there because they think they have known him all his life. We change your diapers for you. We help you crawl. We help you walk. When your teeth was coming out, we saw you. So who do you think you are? But they then realize that who you are is not what you are. They say that we all grow through things. And so it comes to a time that you have to have the mental fortitude, like I said today. Your mindset must, must say that, you know what? There are some groups I've got to leave. Some families, I, I can't disconnect myself or divorce my family. But for the sake of what is ahead of me, Sometimes I've got to be a little bit strong in my mind and pursue what I'm pursuing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, man. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Um, I, I have lots of questions, but... Um, okay. I'm ready. I think this, this is... Okay. I think this is um, 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 very in relation to ministry. He said, um, Dr. Frank, you made a statement that before you commit to any battle, find a reward first. How is this related to ministry work if you are serving under someone? This under serving someone thing has become a huge hot potato, especially in Ghana today. I see a lot of opinions yep. and pontifications on Facebook and everything. But I am still yep. a believer in the fact that everybody serves somebody. And when you are serving somebody, you already have your reward and your reward is free training. David was sent to go and serve Saul. Saul was a madman. Saul was a, a, a spear-throwing man. And please don't forget that David also was a warrior. And anytime Saul threw a, a spear, David could have returned the favor in equal measure. But he didn't do it. Because God put him there to serve a mad leader so that God was teaching David that you can become king without being like that man. You can become a king without being, being like that person. And so when you are serving under somebody, your reward already is that you are observing. You are learning for free. It's a free Bible school. It's a free training course. Mm. You are learning a whole lot of mm. things. The things that you saw that you didn't like, don't go and repeat it. If you would permit me, let me let me suggest. A, you know me, I'm a reader. I'm always reading. You know, there's a little book called The Tale of Three Kings. The Tale of Three Kings by Jean Edwards. Jean is G-E-N-E, Jean Edwards. I recommend it to all my students, all my proteges and everybody. I read it three times a year. And it has to do with Saul, David, and Absalom. Seven under crazy people and the outcomes that come. So, Pastor, Pastor Brian, to the one who asked that question, especially in ministry, whoever you are serving, number one, know you are, you are serving God through a human being. Some of them will treat you bad. Some of them will do all kinds of things you don't like. Your reward is already in it because you are learning how not to do things that way. A day comes, yeah. God will send you on, God will move you on, and you're going to realize that you had free training. So that is my thing just for now. Okay. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you, thank you so much, Daddy. And um, number number three, okay. Um, I think most of the times when you go to Facebook, I personally, I can read the first like seven comments of people their post and it it's all about hurt everybody's hurt everybody's hurt some people are hurt by their pastor by their wife by their ex-boyfriend by by their children by their parents how do we handle it in relation to change how do we handle it this is this is so true it almost feels like we are in a hurt pandemic 
we are in a hurt pandemic. <laughs> you see, listen, the, the greatest human being, the greatest person, let's say the greatest being who ever walked on earth in human flesh is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Right from the day he was born, he started being hurt until ultimately he was hurt by his own people on the cross of Jesus Christ, uh, I, I on the mm. cross of Calvary. And yet he came back to the people who denied him, the people who swore they didn't know him, and he showed them his scars and he's still alive. Sometimes, let me be brutally frank because my first name is Frank. Sometimes we refuse to let go of hurts because of pride, because we feel we are too big to be hurt. I just want to look at somebody in the eye and ask the person, how long? How long? Listen, Samuel, Samuel the great, the, one of the greatest prophets in the Old Testament, prophet, Samuel, he didn't finish well. He didn't finish his ministry well because of heads. He was head because he was mentoring a, a man called Saul. And at the point, if, if it even started when Israel asked for a, a, a king, Samuel was head. He went to God and said, they have rejected me. And God said, no, they haven't rejected you. It's me that they have rejected. But someone took it to her yep. heart. And all his life from then, he was even very active in sabotaging Saul. Go back and read it in your Bible. We should read it clearly. Is there? He gave Saul problems. In the end, the Bible says that Saul went home. Someone went home. They never met each other until his dying day. God had to come to somewhere and ask him, how long will you be hurt? How long will you mourn for Saul? How long? Fill your horn with oil and go. I'm giving you a new assignment. Somewhere, a man who says he had monopoly over revelation. Everybody from Dan to Beersheba knew that God, his, the word of the Lord was with him. He goes now into Jesse's house and is about to ordain and anoint the wrong person because he was hurt. Let me tell you, hurt is the enemy's weapon of choice to contaminate your anointing. Hurt wow. is, the de is the devil's weapon of choice to stop you in your tracks. Understand, you are not too big not to be hurt. Everybody gets hurt, but how you handle your hurts. And there's absolutely no point in displaying your hurts like a museum for people to come and watch. And let me tell you point blank this morning, people don't care. At the end of the day, hurts and offenses are offenses that stop you from going forward. You've got to make up your mind at the point that you know something, I am bigger than this. I am bigger than the offense. Somebody hurt me, so what? Somebody put me down, so what? Am I going to allow what people did to me to determine my future? It's too expensive. Hate, offenses, bitterness, and resentment, they are too... You are looking at a man. I hold a PhD in hurt. I never talk about it. I don't care. I consider it as an wow. example in life. Because if some people have, hadn't hurt me, I will not be sitting where I'm sitting. Wow. 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 <laughs> PhD in hurt. <laughs> Wow, wow. And um, number number four, Dr. Frank, how do you communicate your destination to people for directions when you had a poor feedback from your advisors? I want to repeat it. I want to repeat it. How do you communicate your destination to people for directions when you had a poor feedback from your advisors? I'm not sure I I get the full import yeah. of the question. It's it's a bit. If the person can reframe it for me, I I really want to answer the question. But yeah, if it, if the if he or she can reframe it to make it a little bit more understandable, because it's a little bit. Um, okay. Okay. I I think okay. I think I think the person. How do you communicate? your destination to people for directions when you had a poor feedback from your first advices from your first okay. advices okay well it may, may, and then i suppose that um you made an evaluation and you realized that your first advices didn't advise you right so okay. um, one of the big one of the biggest things that people have to understand that in this life Many times we get it wrong before we get it right. I want somebody to get this because that could be somebody's breakthrough today. Many times we get it wrong before we get it right. And you're not going to have it 100% right all the time. Thomas Edison, we understand, attempted to make the light bulb over a thousand times before he got it right. 
And he said that wow. for the thousand times that was wrong, it wasn't wrong. I learned how not to do it like that again. So you must be bold to go back and let people understand that, listen, I got it wrong the first time. That is the equity. When people know that you can own up when you have made a mistake, they will trust you. When people know that you will lift up your hand and say, you know what, I think I was advised wrong. I got it wrong. I'm ready to put it right. People can trust you. So you must always be transparent. That is what integrity is all about. Be transparent and let people understand that. I sought advice. I got it wrong. Mm -hmm. With hindsight, which is a good teacher, I have learned. I've put myself back on track and I'm going a better direction. For me, when you do that, people will trust you. Okay, wow, wow. Um, I think the questions keep coming. Um, we, we, we are living in a, in a nation, if I should let me where we're having a conference of course let's say in ghana africa continent that if you try to think big in a small place they will fight you how do you deal with that imagine a young person by the 21 start talking that i'm going to own a private jet i'm going to do this when you start thinking big as you said, thinking big is a choice because thinking is free. If you start thinking big in a small place, in a small village, how do you deal with the criticisms and the attacks from people in your village? That is that is one of the demerits of Africa. Uh, well, our African culture. Um, everybody who has become anybody has faced that before. Um, and I think it's one of the... Uh, songs that we sing a lot in, in in africa you can't do it you can't do it you can't do it actually i've been following um not just ghana but all over africa i've been following uh, politicians i want to know what is happening on the on the continent because that is where i was born that is where i'm connected to um and i'm african if i came back a thousand times i want to come and become an african and i realized that because of that of that we we can't do and it can't happen and that kind of thing very few politicians set vision they give promises and there's a difference between a vision and a promise because a vision wow. you have to fight for it you have to work through it you have to go through you have to break it down into goals you have to do is 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 you work it through time but we live in a continent where people don't really have time to wait for anything and so you make them a promise mm. and you know that your mouth is signing a check that your heart can't cash you are making a promise you know you can't you can't fulfill <laughs> hoping that people forget over the times you know, and the thing about it is that no matter what, any time you share your vision, get ready to be attacked. Any time you speak wow. what you believe, get ready to be attacked. Wow. Then also you have to know where you speak it and where you share it. Mm. A mm. very wise carpenter from Galilee, he said something that do not cast your pearl before swine and do not give holy mm. things, before, uh, uh, I mean, to dogs. It's important mm. where you share it where you declare it joseph he shared his mind he, his big dreams that this was going to bow to me bow to me you saw what his brothers did of course providence had it that even though they sold him god sent him but many people have shared their vision at wrong places so you've got to know where you share your vision where you speak it where you speak your mind you've got to be very careful because sometimes you can kill it walk through life sometimes like you're a fool be amongst people like you don't know anything and keep quiet because when your mouth is closed a fish that has its mouth closed is never taken by the hook of the fisherman just keep quiet sometimes think big work big that's why ships you must where you open your mouth you must know where you keep quiet at least that's three and seven says that there's a time to speak. wow <laughs> um having this Atlanta no, right fine. now. I, I, I work out for you, no problem. I, I want to serve the youth of Canada. <laughs> um, I think you've been advising the young people, but I want this um, question to go to our parents. Most parents want their children to do what they want. I want my son to be a doctor. I want my son to be a lawyer. But the son want to do something different please what is your advice to parents that are always insistent because let, let me let me let me just say this i i don't like mathematics so there is nowhere i can go near 
mathematics. When you tell me two times two, I got to pick my phone and go to my calculator and check it. So there's no way my mom or my dad could force me to do it. But we are living in a generation now that most, most parents would want to do what their children what, want to do, what they want to do. What is the advice you would give to parents? I, I, I think, I think, I th thank you for this question because I'm a parent too. And I have learned yeah. how to impose anything on my children. Sometimes people even ask me, why are your children not pastors? I said, I don't call children to be pastors. God does. Every one of them is serving. Wow. They, are, see, are serving they are serving one way or the other in the ministry. They are helping behind the scenes. Um, not everybody likes a microphone. Not everybody wants to be seen in the limelight. But they are all serving the Lord and they are doing things. Now, yesterday, I, I want to use a contempor contemporary example. Yesterday, every morning, uh, mommy mm -hmm. and I would go for our morning walks. We talk, we pray. And mm -hmm. then I was telling her about, I asked her, do you know how much Le, um, uh, Leo Messi earns in a year? And she said, how much? And I said, almost 100 million euro. You know, and she said, wow. And then she said something that, Imagine this, if this young guy had grown up in Africa and he wanted to play soccer. The parents yeah. would have killed him. Because you are either a doctor, a lawyer, or nothing. Or an engineer, or nothing. But everybody is given something by God. You see, God loads you with something. And even playing of soccer has mathematical intelligence. Please forgive me, Pastor Brian. If, for me, may I read a scripture to everybody? May I read a scripture? Yes, please. please. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, you please. know, pro, pro, one of the uh, scriptures that we misquote is Proverbs 22 and 6. Train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he grows, he will not depart out of it. Mm -hmm. You remember that scripture? Let me read it to you yes, to amplify the class. It says, train up a child in the way he should go. Now listen to this. And in keeping with his individual gift or bent, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. Train up a child in the way he should, in keeping with that child's individual gift and bent. That is, the child may be bent towards mathematics, physics, um, classics, arts. Find out. You see, parents don't take their time to find out who God has made their children to be. And so because of this competitive spirit, so and so, all his, all his or her children are doctors, so all my children must be doctors. Meanwhile, your children's bent is towards law. Your children's bent is towards mm -hmm. soccer. Your children's bent is towards the theater. Mm -hmm. Your children's bent is towards entrepreneurship. L know your children. Parents, please know your children. Talk to them. Because sometimes parents don't communicate with their children. And in communicating with your, ch your children, negativity doesn't open their ears for you to listen. Because many times our children only hear from us when something has gone wrong. Build a positive wow. relationship with your children. Talk to them. Ask them questions. Find what is in their heart. Because I believe that, I mean, I grew up, I wasn't really, I didn't have an opinion. You have to study this. And a lot of the things that I was being pushed to learn, I hated. That was not my natural bent. But they could have told me you are a failure because you couldn't do that and so. I thank God for the path that he put me on. And I thank God for where he has brought me. But to every parent that is listening to me today, please find out the natural bent of your child and groom that person and train that person and, and push that person, nurture that person, help that person. One day they'll bring joy to you. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you, thank you so much. I, I know um, um, uh, most especially African parents are listening and they are watching. And please, if you just tune in, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to share the link to 10 of your contacts and tell them that the one and only ambassador of hope, the man that speaks hope to people, it's on live. IS20, this is live. God bless you. All right. Um, 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 someone asked a very interesting question. And nowadays, a lot of people think that every politician is not honest. Will you encourage your your child to go into politics? If my child is politically inclined, yes, I will encourage my child to go into politics. They tell us that politics is dirty. How about clean people going in there to make it clean? To work wow. in integrity. I don't wow. believe that 
every politician lacks integrity. I do not believe that every politician is a thief. I do not believe that yeah. politics, as it were, is not good for Christians. Because the only that is necessary for evil to triumph is when good people do nothing. I believe that good people, Christians, right people, people of integrity must get involved in the system. Sometimes the system of corruption and is so huge that sometimes you feel that I can't even make a difference. Wow. A young, a, a, an old man was walking on a beach one early morning and a lot of little starfish. The tide came and they came with the tide, but when the tide was going back, they got lost and they were on the beach and the sun was coming up and the sun began to just, I mean, beat on them and they were about to die. And here was this old man who started picking the starfish and throwing back them back into the sea. In fact, there were thousands of them. And another boy looked at the young old man and said, what are you doing? And he said, I'm trying to save the starfish. And the young boy said, but there are too many of them. You can't do that. What difference can you make? And the old man picked up one starfish, threw it back into the sea and said, I've made a difference mm -hmm. to that one. Sometimes it takes just one person to start a movement. It takes one person to start a revolution. And I know that the youth of this world are tired. Yeah. And I believe that very soon there will be a revolution. Not of guns, not of swords, not of bombs, not of violence, but a revolution of we are tired and we want our leaders to do right by us. We can do it. We must. We well, can. Well. Yeah. We will. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, Dr. Frank, um, what would you describe as your best advice to every young person? People tuning in all over. What would, would you describe as your best advice? I have something that when I meet my mentors, of course, I know I've, I, I have come to your house, come to your office, I've asked you several times. When you are 99 years old, 101 years old, because now you are over 60 and you look like 26, the only frightened baby. <laughs> I'm 60, <laughs> baby. <laughs> wow. When you are 100 years old and you know that your assignment is done and God is calling you, and you are alive with us, what would be your best advice? My best advice, wow. Mm. Be yourself. Have confidence wow. in yourself. Follow your dream. Wow. Put your head down wow. and do everything wow. that you believe you can do. You are a possibility. You can do it. Let wow. no God know to you. Let nobody say no. You can do it. You can do it. Listen, don't live your life trying to copy somebody. Because if you do that, mm. you only become a glorified photocopy. Be yourself. That's right. You are loaded wow. with possibilities before you came here. Wow. In the secret workshop of your mother's womb, God designed you uniquely. There's something on the inside of you that if you don't give to this world before you die, you've troubled us. Find it. Be yourself. And serve yourself to humanity. That's what I may say. I can say wow. a thousand things. But one thing, be yourself and go get it. Yes, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, IS2020, be yourself. Yeah. Everything is possible. Dr. Frank, before you go, can you please say a prayer for every young person? Um, with yes. this COVID 19, a lot of young people are misplaced. Can you please say a prayer of hope? to every yes i would i would do that um let me say this that um pastor brian you know you are you are in the uk right now. um it's yes, about please. what what is almost two o'clock or three o'clock two two o'clock please two o'clock two o'clock in Ghana is about one um and here yes, in atlanta is getting it's about nine in the morning if yes, we all look up into the skies we will not see the stars but the stars yeah. have not gone anywhere. They are. So, Ambassador of Hope, want to say to everybody before I pray: If you want to see stars, darkness is required. Right wow. now, there's the darkness wow. of a pandemic, coronavirus, COVID nineteen is darkness. 
But wow. the star of fortune, the star of breakthrough is still shining. Oh. Don't be despondent and don't die yourself. In 1850, Pastor Brian, in your city of London, there was an epidemic of cholera. Every day, wow. about 600 to 1,000 people were dying. And every day, Dr. Charles Spurgeon stood in shoe leather, flat-footed, and preached hope to the city. He says something that this epidemic, and, to, and for that matter, this pandemic, has done nothing to destroy us, but it has done everything to heal us. In the midst of this pandemic, Jeff Bezos has become the richest person on earth. In the midst yeah. of this pandemic, Elon the fourth richest person. In the midst of this pandemic, people are breaking through. Don't give up. Don't surrender yourself to what is happening today. And so, Father, I pray, thanking you for Pastor Brand, for Abigail, for the team, for IS team. Thank you for the media people. Thank you for everybody that is making this telecast, this broadcast, this, this social media broadcast go all over the globe. Father, I am praying for the youth of Ghana and the youth of Africa. Thank you that they are our future, our inspiration, and our hope. I pray in the name of the Lord that these few things that myself, uh, Madam Patricia Obonai, and all the presenters will share, Lord, I pray that this will open doors for your people, doors in their minds, doors in their resolve, doors that they will step out of the old and get into the new. I pray in the name of the Lord that nothing will contain the youth of Africa and keep them mm. from becoming everything that they can be. I pray for that mm. can-do spirit to be manifested. Mm. Let it explode like a bomb on the inside of them. Let the youth of Africa mm. rise up once more. Have a mental revolution. Have a can-do spirit and determine that we take our continent back and make Africa great once more. I thank you that mm. in this season, Lord, you have, you have promised us your protection. That a thousand shall fall mm. at our left and ten thousand by our side, but it shall not come near us. And so I pray for everyone, mm. Lord. Let not one of these ones be taken by this coronavirus. Let none of them be taken by this virus in the name of the Lord Jesus. At the end of everything, when the dust is settled and the smoke is cleared, let everyone be accounted for. I thank you. And Lord, I commit the next sessions into your hands. All the presenters, all the preachers, all the singers, all the, everybody who comes, Father, let your hand be upon them. Let the youth of Ghana have a feast in these three days. I thank you in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 Um, Dr. Frank, Daddy, thank you, thank you so much. And of course, to um, all the All Nations family and to yes, the Judah, Judah uh, Prince. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And to Mommy, thank you so much for releasing thank Daddy you. for us early morning like this thank you so much Dr. Fun. thank you thank and god bless you. you now i'm going for my morning run and I'll, I'll be listening as i go thank you god bless you <laughs> god bless bye -bye. you too bye -bye. Wow. Wow. bye wow 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 ladies and gentlemen that was dr frank of Fosu up here and um oh my god what a time what a day like this to start the is 2020 because you know what i want you to do me a favor we are coming tonight. The time is 6 p.m. if you are in Ghana. And of course, if you are in London, UK, it's 7 p.m. Tonight promises to be amazing. Oh my goodness. Tonight, you don't want to miss it. Tonight, we have Max Praise coming. We have SP Coffee Sapon. We have Pastor Isaiah. We have Sissy Chum. You name it. And tonight, I have the great prophet of God, my own brother, Prophet Samson Amorton, who is going to lead us in the first, the first speaker for tonight is Prophet Samson Amorton. And to Prophet Samson, we are going back straight to Adogia to have the one and only Dr. Jamal Bryant, who is going to speak tonight. And after Jamal is done, we are going to get him on live, a live interview session with Dr. Jamal Bryant. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to again appreciate my team for um, um, working tirelessly. Um, um, even in my absence, I do appreciate each and every one. And of course, the ambassadors, I know you've been working hard in Ghana. Amake, that was very, very um, exceptional. And to Divine Media and the team um, in the studio, you know what? 
we have lots of testimonies we were trying to get this was a popular request from my wife um the guy that gave the testimony the ceo of the i'm from yogurt we were trying to get him on but there was some few internet hitches but we promised to bring him on maybe ten or tomorrow is called uh, it has gingered me this is a popular request everybody wants to hear it from the horse's own mouth so please tonight we are coming 6 p.m do me a favor start a watch party share the link even share this link to everyone and tell them that is 2020 is still on and i want to appreciate everyone once again i have been blessed and i can't wait to see you tonight and tomorrow okay let me just highlight this. A whole lot of people were asking me. Let me highlight this. Tomorrow morning, Prophet Victor Kusibuatin is joining us tomorrow morning. And I know your life will never be the same. Thank you so much. And see you tonight. God bless you.